All right, here we are back at the house the next day. These big bull reds have been on ice overnight. I like to ice them down. The only bad thing about it is they get slimy. That's why I put a towel down on my little work table here. So it, uh, it keeps the fish on the table so it doesn't slide off. You'll see what I mean. Works great. Now, let's go see what these beautiful redfish look like. Oh, yeah, I've already drained the water. So, yeah. Oh. Look at those beautiful fish. Look at that beautiful color. All right. All right. All right, I'm gonna get these up on the table, one of them at a time, and get to cleaning. Yep, cutting that out. <laughs> I was probably wondering, what is he doing with that big old bucket knife? Well, I'm gonna tell you what, these scales and these redfish, these scales and these redfish are really big, really tough. So you gotta kinda like just, you wanna just pop them out like that. Just wanna pop them out to where you can get a good spot they're thick, big, thick scales. Just kind of pop an area out, like right here. You got no scales right there now. You're right, right about, see there's their lateral line right there. You can see it clear going down. You want to get right below that, but right before where his fin is right here, you'll see it right here. That's where his fin's at. And now you want to get right here and just kind of cut straight down and then angle it. And you'll feel it. And you can feel the backbone right there, so you can hear it. And you want to kind of just angle it and go towards the head, because there's some good meat up there. And just kind of wedge your way through those, wedge your way through those skills until you get right about there. And then you turn your knife around, cut down. And you'll feel the ribs. And the ribs, you just want to angle your knife down, you'll feel them. So you can hear them, you hear the ribs. And those ribs don't really come down at an angle on this. They come down the backbone and basically come straight down like this, then come down like this over this area. So it's like where my fingers are at, that's the angle of the ribs. And then they come down like this. So you kind of just follow that rib cage and just kind of slowly wedge your way through that area. Now once I get down here pretty far, I kind of start just cutting through. I don't want to go all the way down, you can. People ask me, well, why aren't you filleting it? Well, because if you fillet it, you get a lot of red meat and down towards the tail, it's just real thin, useless. That's why people don't like big bull reds. This here will get you the back strap. Basically, just like a deer, back strap of the redfish. Now, once you get this line cut like this, once you get this line, once you get this line cut like this, you can feel the backbone, so you can hear it there. You wanna come up right here, there's a little edge, there's the dorsal fin. You feel it right inside there. Now is when you get your skinny knife, so now you come over here with the skinny knife and just keep behind there and just gonna feel. You wanna feel the way through. Sometimes you can go this way here and just kinda cut them scales. And you gotta work your tip up, work your tip up. Cause basically what I'm doing is I'm just kinda going like this. Through here, through the skin. I'm just, that's all I'm doing. All the way down that backbone. Just kinda just wedging them. Wedging them, because I'm telling them scales are really tough. Once you get there, just keep on coming down. Always leave your angled knife at an angle. Get here, kind of just cut through. Just cut on through. Now we're gonna turn the fish a little bit. Turn them this way. Now we're coming on this side here. You feel there's, there's some bones right here. You gotta kinda watch out for it. you're gonna get them. You just kinda start filleting it back off that backbone. See that right there? Now you just kinda make a knife. Just go like this. 
right down them dorsal fins. Right down them backbones like that. Just keep on coming, keep on coming, and there you go. You got a nice red redfish backstrap. That's what I call it. That's what I like to call it. I just put that up to the side. As you can tell, here are the bones right here. Here are the rib bones. So I can pop it out. Oops. Just got my wife <laughs> fish cut. See, there's them rib bones right there. And they just come straight out this way here. Right underneath there. See, watch, listen. Right there. So now we flip it over. Hazards of, hazards of being a camera woman. She just got splattered with fish. Now, keep my hands clean. Watch out, camera lady, come over here to my right. Don't worry about that camera, I'm gonna squirt this way. I'm just gonna get all the slime off of here. This one's not too bad, actually. All right. Now just start the process again. Right here above his little thing, you wanna grab these little things and and sometimes they'll go flying. See, but look at those things. They are hard. I actually took some of these redfish scales, dried them out, and sent them to my nephew who's a guitar player. He says that some of them made excellent guitar picks. Crazy, huh? You just sit there and just kind of get them out of the way until you got the meat exposed. And of course, again, you go at the angle. Make sure you don't, you know, Pull too hard towards yourself because you don't want to hurt yourself. You know, sometimes it's better to go slow and safe than fast and in a hurry and hurt yourself. There you go. Get them like that. And they're coming back down. And it's usually, if you look, right here you've got your lateral line. You can see the lateral line. Then you can see the color change line right there. <coughs> You can see that color change line, and that right there is a good starting point to find them ribs. And if you watch as I go down, it's pretty much right down that colored line. And you just want to keep on going down until you get about here, right above that anal fin, and just come around and cut like that right there. Scrape all your guitar picks off. Make sure, because sometimes there's a bone. There's a bone right in here. I'm gonna try and cut that out of your meat. And just, like I said before, go down to the backbone. Now, you can use your big knife also for this job. Just kind of jab it in there. And you just follow it down. Make sure you got your knife at the right angle. And then bring it back also this way here. Remember, you gotta kind of wedge it through these thick scales here and sometimes you can just get a little trap right there there they go now you take it out here this one really sucked and there's two all right now with your fillet knife so you got the skin on one side Meat on the other. I usually try to do it like in small portions. And you're trying really to go all the way down to the meat, I mean to the skin, because you see all that blood meat right there? If you could, could stay off the skin just a little bit, you can get it to where you get most of it off. Now here's the end of it. I just come down. Come all the way down, boom. See, if you don't go all the way down, you can't get all that red meat off of there. Now this goes to the trash pile again. Now you clean it up a little bit. All this little like, little silver skin. You know, this little end here, gets kind of tough with all that fatty tissue, silver skin. So usually I feed that to the dogs. Trim this up right down here. So there you go, nice piece of meat. Nice piece of meat. Now for this here, you kind of just take it and Barely cut a little bit of it off there. Just go into the skin. 
So you just fillet that off. You can flip it over, and all the time I'm doing this, I'm feeling for little bones, because there's one right there. Sometimes you just can't get all of them, so you gotta cut them out. Now, this little corner here, just cut it off. Make it look nice, that little red meat there, cut it off. Don't worry about that line there, that'll be all right. And there you go, another nice piece of meat. Same with this one here. Just cut off that thin spot. And then just take this here and barely cut underneath. If you're not familiar with doing it this way, don't do it. You'll cut your hand. There we go. Now just trim this around. Come on down. Here we go. One, two, three pieces of beautiful meat. Yeah, watch that for a second. Uh, make sure you get a clean workstation. Oops. Oops, almost got two of them. Yeah. The hose is hot. Water's mm -hmm. hot coming out of the hose. Here we go. Three pieces of beautiful meat right there. Put them to the side. Now bring the other one over. And now you just do the same. It's kind of thin right there, so. Just like that. This one here is when I kind of messed up. That's all right, it'll eat the same. That one there, eh, too thin. Clean it up a little bit. That's all right, there we go. All right, now. Here we go. So you got one, two, three, four, five pieces of fish. Five beautiful pieces of redfish. You might think, that's all you got off that big fish? Yes, that is all I got off that big fish. But this is the best pieces of meat that's on that fish. When they get that big, you don't get a big selection. You can't flay it out and do a redfish on the half shell. I'll catch some of those in a, in a later video and show you how to do that. But on these big ones, People say, don't harvest them. They're, no, there's millions of them out there in the ocean. Here in Louisiana, we're allowed one over 27 inches per person. And trust me, you do it like this, you're going to get some beautiful meat. As that being said, this meat is dense meat. It is beautiful meat. I mean, it is, oh, yeah, you can look at it right there. It is some beautiful meat. It's very dense, meaning it's going to be more like a steak. So when you cook it, Think of it as a steak. Grill it, broil it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it because it's got dense, thick meat. Um, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and clean this other fish up real fast and um, we'll meet you on the kitchen. All right, here we are in the kitchen. Got the fish all chopped up, flayed up. It's been soaking in sugar water. We're going to drain it off. Drain all the water off of there. As soon as you get all the water drained off, you're going to want to go ahead and um, get some paper towels ready. Get your plate, my fancy square plate. Hmm. 
Okay, now, I'm going to put you down here. I'm just going to take and just pat all the water off of it. Make sure there's no paper towel stuck to it, of course. <laughs> and while you're doing it, still feel for bones, because, yep, I still found another little bone in there. And always watch out for them little bones. There's not a lot of them, it's just in that one area up towards the front of the gill plate. And I'm going to speed through this real fast so you don't have to watch me pat and dry all of these. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to throw these away. I'm going to go ahead and want to rinse up the bowl. I'm just put that in the sink. Now, we're going to get out the margin. Margin is uh, soft, and we're going to need to put it on the outside of this fish so that the blackening season will stick uh, real good to the, to the fish. So give me one second, and I'm going to grab that butter. Wait a minute. Who do we have here? Hi, Petey. Hi, Riley. There's Petey. There's Riley. There goes Ranger. These are my pities. 100 pounds apiece. Big old babies. Oh, happy dogs. Go, go, go. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on, go, go, go. Get out of the trash can. Hey, come on. Always getting in the trash can. Come on. Frank's danger. All right. Okay, now, let me go get the margarine. Are going to do rice or mac and cheese? I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Now these thinner pieces I'm gonna save for I'm gonna save these for some taco. Now these smaller pieces here, a little thinner, a little shallower. I'm gonna save these for some fish tacos. Um, that'll be another video I do, and I'll tell you what, this is red fish with some beer batter. Woo! And my oh, I can't give you all the coleslaw recipe that I have. I'll make it up and then I'll show it to you afterwards, but that'll be another video. But now, I'm going to get rid of these little pieces like this here that's going to go for that. And I'm going to stick them away. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now we got these bigger pieces here. I'm going to cut them down a little bit. Because you don't want too big of a piece. Now that's, that's, a, that's a lot. That's a big old chunk of fish right there for someone to be eating on. So is this one, but you cut them in half and it's perfect. And right now it's going to be me, my wife, and my daughter and her friend. So I'm just going to take these and cut them in half. I love this little strainer here. It's awesome. Okay, there's one, two, three, four. That's a good size piece right there, five. And then this one here, be for me. I'll take it for lunch tomorrow. Yeah, I'll eat the whole thing. Here we go, yeah. Okay. So now. This is what we're going to do with the butter. Just get some butter in your hand like this. Get your fish and just slather it on there nice and good. Just want to get it all. You want to get it all up in there like that. All around it. And all the nooks and crannies. This is why I'm wearing gloves. Normally I don't wear gloves, but I want to massage this in here. Just get a nice good coating. Get some more. 
And you gotta, sometimes you get the cracks, you gotta get it out a little bit. But you wanna give it good. Cause this is also is gonna work. This also is going to help make the crust for the blackening. You know, a lot of people go, blackening, that's just burnt. No, it ain't burnt. It's called blackened. All right, there's one there. Now I'm gonna do the rest of these up real quick. Let the messy parts over. All right, I usually use Paul Perdone's blackening season because that stuff is the best so far that I have found. But I was told about these two right here make a great choice together. We got Cajun Choice and we got Zatarans. A friend of mine told me if you mix them together, they work very well. Tried them one time and I wasn't disappointed, so we're gonna do it again. Now, you wanna be pretty liberal with this. You don't wanna be chintzy because like I said, you wanna use this to make the, the bark basically, the crust, whatever you wanna call it, the blackened, not burnt, blackened. Okay, now we'll give it a little bit of the Cajun. I can open it. Boop. There we go. This would be a little thicker, a little darker. And pat it in a little bit. Oh yeah, smells good. ahead and flip them on over and do it again on the other side. This is why I like doing it over the sink. Now you can see what's going on. Now you're just gonna put it on here liberally, like I said, just put it on there. Give it a good coating. Alright, now the Zatarans. Top it off a little bit, add it on there. Pat too hard to take that butter off of there. Just want to basically push it into that butter, get the edge, the ends, and everything. Oh, yeah. These look mighty good and they smell terrific. You can see they might not look like a whole lot now, but once they get done cooking, woo-wee! You see that butter on there? Gonna make a nice crust. 
So now I'm gonna go out here and get this griddle started. Get this griddle started and uh, get it up to temperature. Meanwhile, I'm put these in the refrigerator, get them, keep them chilled, keep them nice and cool, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for the griddle to get hot, I'm gonna cut up a squash, and we're gonna be putting it on the griddle also. While the wife is making some southern baked beans, baby, is that what you're doing? Yes, and homemade mac and cheese. And homemade, homemade mac and cheese. Can't give you the recipe for that either. Okay, but anyway, here we go. We're gonna be uh, getting on this, get this squash cut up for you here. I just cut the ends off. And then I just cut a long ways. About an eighth of an inch thick or so. And it's only me and my wife that like these, so that's all it's gonna be, so. And then I just take a little bit of Tony's spice and herb. Oh, good stuff. I gotta get under you for a second. Just sprinkle a little bit on there. Kind of like any fruit or vegetable, the natural juices will come out with the seasoning. I'll let it sit there for a little bit. And then as I put it on the griddle, you know, it's gonna be on a little butter. I'll put some more on the other side. All right, now all we're doing is just waiting for the griddle to get hot. All right, so the griddle's smoking. See, this will tell you right here. So you can see how that seasoning is kind of embedded itself in that butter. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Let's still do this. Can you get the door for me, honey? All right, here we go. Here's the griddle right here. As you can tell, it's smoking a little bit. We get all this on here now. I've got this side not so hot, but I've got this side hotter. I want the hot side for the fish. Now, take it gently. Oh, listen to that. Now I'm gonna have to do this real quick, like. Oh yes, that's what you want. You want that sizzle and that smoke. That's blackening really good. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a little butter in between them. Help it out a little bit, you know. Get that going. Oh yeah. This is good. Oh yeah. <laughs> You can smell this. Oh man. Man, I tell you what. Oh yeah. Probably isn't like true. But man, that's good. Hot. Come on now. There we go. Yeah. Ooh. 
look at that. Lightly blackened, do we really not be my family like it? You know, it's so good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and come back in here, because like I said, it is hot in Louisiana. Camera's getting hot. And uh, we'll be back here in a little bit when everything gets plated and let you know how it goes. Oh yeah, don't forget, still putting those on there. So yeah, we'll see here up a little bit. All right, we're getting ready to sit down and eat. Here we kind of do it, you know, just grab a plate. Got the fine china out today. Got the beans. Got the homemade yummy macaroni and cheese. And then we got the fish, some shrimp, and grilled squash. Of course, my daughter, she has to go straight for the fish because that's her favorite. All right, I'm going to fix myself a plate. Man, it looks so good. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that squash. Ooh, yeah, got the squash. Oh, macaroni and cheese. Homemade. Oh, sh oh yeah, better turn that off. Ooh, I'll cut that out. Don't worry, honey. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, the battery died right then. Sorry about that. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. By the way, that fish was excellent. Very good. Cut it just like a steak. The girls loved it. My wife loved it. Squash was tender. Macaroni and cheese was great. Homemade. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless you. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, open the door. It's your outdoors. Go explore it.